On behalf of Pastor and Lady Ming and the Retrieve Your Life family, we welcome you to Retrieve Your Life Ministries, a church that is looking up, reaching out, and caring for all. Let's join today's service, which is already in progress. Good morning, church. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, good. I wasn't going to have to chastise y'all for being asleep this morning. Amen. This is the day the Lord has made. We should, we need to rejoice and be glad in it. Now, whether you rejoice, it's on you. God has been, God has been so good. And we learned this lesson this morning. Lord, his glory is all over the place. Yeah, if he, we may, it may not be, some of us, it may not be obvious, but his glory is all over the place. Look outside, you see the leaves change. They ain't doing that on their own. All right. You see the chickies? Everybody woke up this morning. I can guarantee you somebody on this planet didn't wake up this morning. That's right. That's right. God is good. God is loving. God is merciful. He gives us ju He gives us just enough to take that next step and to put that faith in him. We should be glad that we able to we should be glad that we woke up this morning. We should be glad that we have the use of our limbs. Yes. Yes. You know, it's funny just listening to the just listening to today to the Sunday school lesson this morning, Bible study Wednesday, and we always get to choice. Right. We always get to choice. And every day we wake up in the morning, God gives us a choice. Amen. Yes. Whether we want to admit to that or not. Some of us are that arrogant enough to say, Oh, I already know what I'm doing. We talked about that this morning. But those of us who we say we're Christians, and those of us who are walking as God walks, we know God gives us a choice every morning. And we need to serve him. So I gave, so, and I'm coming out of Joshua, if you want to follow along, Joshua chapter 24, and I'm starting at verse 13. So I gave you a land on which you did not toil, and cities you did not build, and you live in them and eat from vineyards and olive groves that you did not plant. Now fear the Lord and serve him with all faithfulness. Throw away the gods your forefathers worshiped beyond the river and in Egypt, and serve the Lord. But if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, then choose for yourselves this day, this day, 1030, November 2nd, 2014, choose for yourself this day whom you will serve. Whether the gods your forefathers served beyond the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you're living, but as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Amen. Amen. So today, you have a choice. You can serve the political machine. You can serve your job. You can serve your friends. You can serve your family. You can serve money. You can serve whatever. But you have a choice. As for me, I'm serving the Lord. Amen. And I hope for all of you you, serve, you choose to serve the Lord. So today, let's give God the praise, the glory, and the honor that is due him. Amen? Amen. This is your call to worship. For this day, because as the minister said, this truly is the day that the Lord has made. And we will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. We thank you that we could come to you in prayer, Lord. Yes. No matter what time of the day or night it is, we don't have to get permission. Yes. We could just come. We could just arm ourselves and you would take care of us and listen and hear. And we thank you for thank it. You. Thank you. Just touch each one of us today, Lord. Give us wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Whatever you want us to know, Lord, just bless. Bless over us. This whole congregation. Yes. yes. 
Each one of us will lift you up, Lord. Take care of each one of our members, Lord. Yes. And we thank you for it. Yes. Give us all wisdom, knowledge, and understanding yes. to know whatever you would have us to know. Yes. And just bless us, Lord, because you really have blessed my family. Yes. So bless R-Y-L-L ministers. And we thank you for it, Lord. We bow down to you, Lord. We honor you. We magnify your name. And we thank you for being God. We thank you for leading us and directing us and guiding us. Thank you, Lord. Just touch each one, Lord, again. Touch us, Lord. Be with the pastor as he bring that sermon today, Lord. Let us all get what you would have us to get from it. And we thank you for it. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the message. Thank you for the word. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Be with the lady, Lord. Just bless her and strengthen her in her ministry. Be with each one of the ministers. Be with the deacons, Lord. Yes. Just touch them and bless them, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you. Thank you. Praise your holy name. Yes. We lift you up, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for this day again, Lord. Yes. Truly, thank you. Thank you. With these and all of the blessings I ask in the mighty name of Jesus. And I say amen. 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 You know you couldn't have made it. Yeah. Come on, you know you couldn't have made it. Yeah. Well, God, you, you already know that you couldn't have made it if it wouldn't have been for him. Yeah. You never would have made it. Yeah. Never would have made it. Yeah. Whatever your struggle is, whatever you're going through, you never would have made it. If it had not been for the Lord, I never would have made it. We've all come along in a mighty way down this mighty road that we own. We all been through some stuff. And we never would have made it through all the sicknesses we had to go through, through all the heartache, through all the pain. Oh, show love, Pastor. Show love. Everything we've had to struggle with, we never would have got through it if it had not been for the Lord. I never would have made it. I don't think none of us would be standing where we are right now and never would have made it if it had not been for God. All right. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Ain't nobody got you in the position you in today but God. I never would have made it. How many of y'all thought you'd be where you are right now and say, I never would have made it, but God said, oh, you're going to make it. You're going to make it. Well, I got a plan. I got a plan for you. Like, you're going to make it. But see, first of all, you got to believe and know that you're going to make it. If you don't think you can make it, you won't make it. But God already said, I got a plan. You're going to make it. And you got to know that I never would have made it if it had not been for him. Not anybody else. Can't nobody get you through nothing. They can only enhance your problem. But I never would have made it. If it had not been for you, yes, yes. oh, my father, yes. God, I'm going to tell y'all something. God is so wonderful. Yes. He's so loving yes. that everything that we ever thought about, that's not of him. Everything you've done, that was not of him. He still says, I love you. Yes, Amen. yes. Just when you thought that you was at your lowest of your low, you don't know which way you're going to go. I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't, I, I don't even know how I'm going to just survive. Yes, yes Lord. I never would have made it. Yes. God always got a ram in the bush, man. Yes. God always got a ram in the bush. I'm telling you right now. All you got to do is just hold on to him. God always makes a way. Y'all yes, right. quick to say God will make a way out of nowhere, but do you believe he'll make a way out of nowhere? Come on, fam. Come on. Yes. Never would have made it. Yes. 
Mm -hmm. I want to thank more of us for showing up this morning. Amen. Amen. All right. yeah. You know, he took time out of his schedule. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> and got on YouTube for us. <laughs> Amen. Amen. We thank you, Marvin. Because we never would have made it. I remember when that song first came out, I said that was my theme song. Yeah, that's, that's, and I haven't heard that song in a while, so I thank you for that. That, that was just so uplifting and so encouraging right now this morning. Because I think right now we all need to know that we never would have made it. That whatever our struggles are, whatever we're going through, whatever we have to face, that God is right there with us in that struggle. God is walking with us in that struggle. You know, you, you, you're going to make it. You just got to hold on, baby. Just got to hold on. Your greater is coming. Your release is coming. Your deliverance is coming. You, you just got to hold on. You know, you, you got to think back to the day with Sam and Dave. And, and, and you know, y'all are young boys, you don't know nothing about that. And Sam and Dave had a song called Hold On, Because I'm Coming. And you know, that's what Jesus is saying. You got to hold on, because I'm coming. Y'all don't know about that. Y'all don't know about that. But y'all know how we do it all YLM. A woman decided to have her portrait painted, so she told the artist, paint me with diamond rings, a diamond necklace, hmm, emerald bracelets, a ruby brooch, and I want a gold Rolex. Now the artist said, but wait a minute. You're not wearing any of those things. She said, I know that, but in case I should die before my husband, I'm sure he's going to remarry right away. And I want his new wife to go crazy looking for all my jewelry. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Say it like you mean. This is my Bible. This is my guide. The word of God in whom I will trust. Amen. Amen. And I don't want you ladies to start going out and, and you know, getting your fortress painted nine, and hanging it up, you know, with all that stuff on it, you know, and then, you know, yeah, yeah, you know some of y'all going to do that, though. Some of y'all, matter of fact, going to just start hiding your jewelry now. Amen. Turn your Bible to the book of Matthew, the first book in the gospel. First book in the New Testament, Matthew, chapter 9, starting at verse 18. Matthew, chapter 9, starting at verse 18. Matthew chapter 9, starting at verse 18. Amen. 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 Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we just thank you on this day, God. We thank you for who you are and what you are. And Father, we just come before you and stand before the throne right now, Lord. We just ask that you just give us a word today. Let us hear from you, God. Father, let me stand behind the cross. Let me decrease as you increase in me. These are all things we ask in Jesus' holy name. Amen. 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 Emmanuel. Amen. Matthew 9 and 18. We're there. Amen. And I'm reading out the NIV, and the Bible reads as thus. While he was saying this, a ruler came and knelt before him and said, My daughter has just died. But come and put your hand on her, and she will live. Jesus got up and went with him, and so did his disciples. But just then, a woman who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years came up behind him and touched the edge of his cloak. And she said to herself, if I only touch his cloak, I will be healed. Jesus turned and saw her. This is what Jesus said. Take heart, daughter, for your faith has healed you. And the woman was healed from that moment. Amen. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of God. For a brief moment, I want to uh, just, just talk about this morning. Touching the hymn. Touching the hymn. If we could just reach out this morning and touch the hymn of Jesus Gorman, we could see so many folks being healed spiritually and physically, couldn't Because it only takes faith. That's all it takes. It only takes faith. Faith is what we need this morning, you all. Yes. You know, we, we, we heard the song, I never could have made it. Faith is what we need this morning. Amen. We need a lot of faith this morning. The kind of faith that this woman in, the, in Matthew chapter 9 had. That's the kind of faith we need this morning. Amen. Because this woman, you know, first of all, you have to understand that faith is supernatural. Uh -huh. You understand what I'm saying? Because Jesus is in the supernatural. Jesus is in the, he came down here on the, world, on the world, and he was in the natural world, but Jesus was supernatural. 
and so is faith. Faith is supernatural because faith is to be heard and not seen. And you hear about it from the word of God. Amen? Amen. So there was the secret hope for health by this woman, and she had been, you know, she'd been hemorrhaging and bleeding for 12 years, right? She was desperately hopeless. Hear what I'm saying. Hear what I'm saying. She was desperately hopeless. Yeah, 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 with me. Y'all stay with me. She was desperately hopeless. How many hopeless people we got this morning? She was feeling ashamed. She was embarrassed. She felt unworthy. Huh? Now, according to the law, she was not even to be in the crowd surrounding Jesus. Y'all got to understand this. First of all, in Provost, this wasn't even, this wasn't even, so it wasn't even about her. This was about a little girl that had died by one of the rulers. And the ruler went to, went to Christ because he knew about Christ and his healing. And he said, you know, you need to come with me. Well, if you touch my daughter, I know she'll live. But along the way, as Jesus was walking with, this, with, this, with, 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 his, with, with his disciples to go and heal this man's daughter, here comes this woman that had this issue for over the last 12 years. Now, how many of y'all have had some issues for the last 12 years? Amen. Or more? Amen. 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 See, we read the word of God, and we're reading this passage, but we're, while we read it, all we see is the hemorrhaging and the bleeding. We're not thinking about our own issue. We're, we, we're so focused on the bleeding in the word of God. But you've got to understand one thing. This is about everything that's going on in your life. You've been going through some stuff for the last 12 years or more. You've been hemorrhaging and don't even know it. It's time for you this morning to reach out. <laughs> All you got to do is reach out and touch the hem. You, you ain't got to stand before him. Just reach out and touch the hem of his garment. That's all you got to do. Reach out and touch the hem of his garment. Now, check this out. She was supposed to be isolated. Mm -hmm. Away from everybody. Mm -hmm. But her desperation. Check this. She didn't care about nobody else. She didn't care what people thought. She didn't care what, what she looked like. You got to understand, this woman is bleeding all over the place now. She didn't care who saw it. She was desperate. How many of y'all desperate this morning? How many of y'all desperate enough to look at, you're looking for, you're looking for something. But how many have faith? How many have faith and believe that Jesus Christ can deliver? Amen. That you don't even have to stand before him. You don't even have to see him. All you got to do is just reach out and touch the hem of his garment. Mm. Oh, Lord Jesus. See, this woman, you got to understand something, you all. This woman was unclean according to the people back in that day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And some of us are unclean. Amen. And see, she felt that Jesus wouldn't touch her or even see her because she was unclean. That's right. <laughs> this goes back to the book of Leviticus. And it tells us about a woman being unclean. Mm -hmm. And when she's unclean, she can't do anything. You know, she has to wait and then she has to wash herself. And anybody that touches her or lays her has to, has to take a bath and wait 12 days before they become clean again. That's what the word says. But here in the New Testament, this woman, she's walking around, she's unclean. And there's so many unclean people in the world today. Yes. We got a lot of unclean people in the world today. And I'm just here to tell you this morning, she thought he would never touch her. You know, she had heard all these wonderful things about him. How many of y'all have heard some wonderful things about him? Amen. Amen. Huh? Then she said, figure, if I can only touch the hem of his garment. Mm -hmm. yeah, 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 yeah. It's all touch. I don't need to be with him. I don't need to, for him to touch me. I, don't need, I just need to touch the hem of his garment. And be made whole. Be healed. Who looking for a healing this morning? Amen. Amen. Somebody always in need of something. 
You, you, you think you got it all together and got everything, but you really don't. All right. Point number one. That was just the introduction. Amen. Right. <laughs> As Jesus was being pressed through this crowd, you all, she stepped up behind him and she touched his robe. She touched his robe. And he knew it. How? How? That's the question. How? How did Jesus know? Well, I'm glad y'all asked that question. <laughs> Point number one, he knew because her faith touched him. Her faith touched him. It is faith, you all, that touches Jesus. Because we, like I told you before, faith is supernatural. Right? Faith will never go unnoticed with Jesus. Huh? Jesus stopped and he turned to the woman. Uh, after she had touched. See, you got to understand one thing. When you touch the master, he feels the power that's going from him into you. All right. And when she touched his cloak, she felt the power of Jesus, but he felt the power leaving him. And that's why he turned to this woman. Jesus, see, that's what I love about Jesus. He don't discriminate how unclean we are. Because he already know we dirty. <laughs> but he just said, did right. That's why he can tell her, daughter, <laughs> your faith has healed you. I, I, I ain't did nothing. Your faith in me, because you had the faith enough to just touch the him. That's right. See? You weren't worried about coming to me and say, touch me. You, you, you had enough faith to just touch the hem of a garment that I'm in. All right, all right. Oh. That's going over your head. That's going over your head. Let me break it down. Let me break it down. <laughs> See, to Jesus, the most important work in all the world is meeting a person's needs, you all. Yes. And that's the most important thing to Jesus is meeting our needs. And we all have some needs. Yes. And how many of your needs have been met? You still got a lot of wants out there. I understand that. I understand that. You know, you you you, you want the 2015 Escalade. I know I want one. Amen. <laughs> it look nice, too. Can't afford it. Can't afford it. Let's church by for <laughs> So we know that ain't coming in no time soon. Amen. <laughs> That's just not in the picture. <laughs> so did we just want to say, to Jesus, the most important work in all the world is meeting our needs. That's, that's his job. That's what's important to him. The more desperate the need, check this, the more Jesus wants to stop and, you know, face that need that we have. Mm -hmm. But where is our faith? We're always talking about how much we love the Lord and trust the Lord, but when it comes to start having that faith, we start having doubt. Mm -hmm. right. We start backtracking. We start thinking about, oh, I don't, I don't know, I don't know. See, that's, that's all you got to say is, I don't know. That doctor just snuck right on in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, you done blocked what he was getting ready to do. Right. Mm -hmm. See, you put the firewall up there. You know, that computer term on me. <laughs> <laughs> and the firewall in the computer was something that blocks them, that, 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 that blocks stuff that, that was coming in. It's trying to get into your computer. It blocks it from getting in there. See, that's what's wrong with some of us right now. We, we had a firewall up with Jesus and our faith, and we put a block up there and put a firewall so now Jesus can't work. Mm. Oh, no. Message. He can't penetrate and get through because what he was trying to do, you put a firewall up. Because right. right. you start doubting. Your, your faith just said. <coughs> and then we wonder why we don't get saved. We wonder why we don't get out of our circumstance. Nobody's blocking nothing but you. <laughs> it's not God that's blocking your blessing. You're blocking your own blessing. And on top of that, check this out. I'm, I'm going to hit you with this one. You're blocking somebody else's blessing. All right, all right. Because y'all always in somebody else's business. All right, all right. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. All right. All right. <laughs> Amen. What they ain't got, what they didn't do, why this, why that. They're talking about this, they're talking about it. 
You blocking their blessing, you blocking your blessing, block. Look, if you want to be a blocker, go get a job in the NFL. <laughs> 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 But it's her faith that touched him. Can't nothing touch the Lord but your faith. Don't you, I mean, it, it, check this out. I'm going to go a little further for you. Break it down some more. In the book of Hebrews, chapter 11, he talks about, that's the book of faith. We call that the book of faith. Yes. Because in chapter, uh, Hebrews chapter 6, I think it was like verse 5 or something like that, he said, it is your faith that pleases God. Your faith. Oh, your faith, it's your faith that pleases God. And you know what I'm saying? We have got to increase our faith in him. We have truly got to believe that he can deliver, that he can bring us out, no matter what it is. It may not happen when you want it to happen, but it's going to happen. But how many of us are patient enough to do as Isaiah told us to do? Wait upon the Lord. No, we're always in a rush. See, we 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 the microwave society. You know what I'm saying? We put it on one minute, ding, 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 and then we want, we want all our stuff to be gone. Well, sometimes, you know, if you look at your microwave, it got, you can put almost 70 minutes on it. Sometimes you got to wait a while mm -hmm. and let it cook mm -hmm. properly. Mm -hmm. But no. Mm -hmm. Y'all want y'all cake done, and, and that's why your cake don't be done. It'll be all gooey and everything else. <laughs> 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 So you got to understand when you're desperate. How many, you know, how many of y'all desperate this morning? Right, none of you. See, so you ain't looking for nothing here. Well, I'm telling you right now, I'm desperate as I don't know what. I, I, want, I want him to come to me. Take, relieve me of some stuff, because I'm desperate right now. See, I don't know if, see, see y'all so afraid to just to let the Lord and let everybody know that you're desperate. I'm desperate, and I'm proud of it. Amen. <laughs> Ain't no shame in my game, and it shouldn't be none of yours. <laughs> Amen. Because everybody in here, you know, there's some desperate folks in here, but ain't nobody going to say it because we, we get embarrassed. <laughs> <laughs> folks, are, we, people know what our business. Mm -hmm. And see, and, I, and I'm with you on that because, you know, I just got to talk about it. You know, because everybody going to talk about you. Because that's what they do. Even church folks. Right. Right. Church folks are the worst folks. Yes. Can't keep nothing to themselves. <laughs> you know? It's all YLM. Next thing I know, it's all of a transformation. <laughs> <laughs> and then they're knocking on over though. Yeah, let me tell you, what, you know, what's your past? Your past? <laughs> what? Because <laughs> y'all don't know how to, y'all loose lips. <laughs> <laughs> and y'all know what loose lips do. <laughs> I'm trying to keep the ship afloat. All right. And y'all doing like this. Because <laughs> you're running your mouth. <laughs> and ain't talking about nothing. Because right. you don't even know the truth. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> Come on now. Now where's your faith? Mm. How, how, how can your faith touch him when you got all this going on? Point number two, I'm going to get off of y'all for a minute. <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> Her perseverance touched him. Her perseverance, you know what? She never gave up. No, nope, I'll tell you something. You got, picture this, 2,000 years ago. You know, look here, ain't no cars or nothing, just people. I mean, a crowd of people. We're talking thousands of people, you all. And she had to work her way through this crowd. <coughs> Picture that. She never gave up. And you got to understand, while she's moving through the crowd, she still got this issue now. Right. 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 
And people probably getting out of the way because, you know, back then, she unclean. Right. They don't want to get touched. Picture that for a moment. Now picture, your, picture yourself. How many times have you given up? How many times have you given up when, when God said, I got you? God had already told a whole bunch of you all, I got you. Yes. Don't, worry. Don't worry about it. I, I got this. But then you know how we unpatient for we he ain't moving fast enough. We get, you know, we get we get angry. We start getting depressed. We stop praying. Huh? That's the first thing we should be doing. We should never give up on praying. That's right. All right. We stop praying. We just start giving up on the Lord. We stop coming to church. Stop showing up. And then we go back into the same thing we were doing before we called ourselves, giving ourselves to the Lord. And we just give up. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. Because this woman had a serious issue. How many of y'all done bled for 12 years? Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. Y'all done had y'all babies healed up and everything else. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> yeah. Hallelujah. Uh, yeah. Th think about it. Yeah. You, you, didn't have, you didn't have children. Yeah. What if that was you? Yeah. And it didn't know how to stop. All right. Half of you ain't coming out the house. <laughs> That's right. You're not moving. You don't want to see nobody, don't want to be bothered, don't want nobody to pray for you. Just gave up. And that's what we do in life. When things don't go our way, we give up. Yes. If it's not the way we want it or think it's the way it should go, we give up. And all of us, all of us, from the pulpit to the door, should be ashamed. Because this woman had a serious issue. And she worked her way through the crowd because she never gave up. She believed that she had enough faith to know that God could heal her. She was desperate. This is, the, this is, the, this is it. I have been everywhere else. I have seen all kind of doctors. I have seen all kind of people. I don't have nowhere else to go. All right, now. All right. All right. Cool. How many of y'all have been in that position where you just ain't got nowhere else to turn? Mm -hmm. yes. Amen. But to the Lord. Right. But how many of us turn to the Lord? We sit and just wallow in our mess. Mm. That's why you stink. Mm. <laughs> because you don't have the perseverance to touch you. You got to learn how to persevere. You got to learn how to push through. You got to learn how to make your way through the crowd. No matter what, you keep on going. I don't care if it takes the next 10 years. Baby, keep on pushing through. Yes, yes, That's right. Right. That's right. Don't give up. Don't give in. Don't stop praying. Push. Whatever you do, don't give up. Because God is not going to give up on you. He's at the end waiting on you to get your way through the crowd to touch the garment. Amen. He waiting to give you that power. Yes, yes. Because he knows you're working your way through. But he also knows you got to work your way through some stuff. See, people, we got to understand one thing. God, God takes us through stuff so that we can get better for the stuff that he has for us at the end. All right. All right. Yes. You're not going through all of this for no reason. See, but you're working your way to your greater. All right. Ooh, thank you, Lord. I thank him. <laughs> Understand that. Perseverance pays off. It really does. So don't get discouraged, you all. 
Keep going forward. No matter what, keep going forward. Don't stop. Don't stop till you get enough. <laughs> don't stop. I'm telling you, don't stop till you get enough. <laughs> I like that pass. I like that. <laughs> Just don't stop. <laughs> don't stop till you get enough. Come on, fam. Oh, my. Did you feel me? Because you, whatever you do in life, when you stop and give up, Satan says, let's have a party. Right. That's right. And that's when y'all go into your Marvel game routine. I want to go out and party. <laughs> <laughs> Because you just stopped and you gave up. Yeah. Press forward. Yes, yes. Persevere. You are a conqueror. God has a greater for you and it's waiting for you. Whatever your issue is, trust me. This morning, I want you all to be, I want you all to keep reaching out and touching the hem of his garment. Amen. I want you to leave here reaching out, wanting to touch the hem of that garment. That's right. Because I want you to increase your faith in the Lord. Yes. Mm -hmm. Trust God. Point number three, I'm going to let y'all go. I know y'all get tired of me. Jesus, he made her whole again. Mm. Jesus made her whole again. Check this out. He said, take heart, daughter. Your faith has healed you. And the woman was here from that moment. Don't you know that when you get there to that point where you can touch and reach out and touch to him and that woman, he's going to make you whole again spiritually, yes. physically, yes. emotionally? Yes. Huh? Yes. And you know some of y'all got, got, got some emotional stuff all, all up in here. Y'all got a whole lot of emotions y'all want to just let go. Huh? Who, who, who wants to be made whole spiritually all over again? Yes, to really serve the Lord. Yes. Just by touching the Him. Just by touching the Him. Yes. See, understand this. This all started out from the beginning, if you read the story, that, that he was going to, to, going to uh, heal this little girl that died. Well, guess what? At the end... He goes, he still goes to the house after the, after the woman is here with the issue of blood. He still makes his way to the house of the ruler. And they start laughing. And they told him, she's dead. And Jesus said, get this, Jesus said, no, she's just asleep. And he walked into the room and he put everybody else out. And he kept a couple, a few of them in there with him, but the parents were not. And he wouldn't have touched her. And she rose again. Uh, hmm. 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 Y'all missed that. <laughs> <laughs> she rose again. All right. Amen. First resurrection. See, Jesus wasn't the first one to be rose from the dead. Amen. Hmm. Read your Bibles. Read your Bibles. He made her whole again. The issue with the woman, the, the woman with the issue of blood. Then he turned around and he made the little girl whole again. He still accomplished what he set out to do from the beginning, even though there was an incident in the middle of his, of his journey to this little girl. And think about this. When, when, when she reached out and touched his garment, she just reached out and touched his garment. It wasn't like she stopped there and just, there was a whole, you know, they stayed there for an hour, hour and a half. She touched him, got healed. He told her she was whole again. Praise the Lord. See you later. I got something else to do. Thank you. <laughs> Holler at me on the way back. Maybe we have a cup of coffee or something. How many of us want to be made whole again physically? How, you know, as, as, as we get older, we start having aches and pains. And, but, but you know what? You got to start. You got to start living right. You got to start doing right. We got to start eating right. Hallelujah. <laughs> we got to start doing all the right things. We got to exercise. Amen. You know, when we was young, we was running, playing ball and all that, getting all kind of exercise, staying slim and trim. Get 40, 50, basketball and all that went out the window. 
stomach start just 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 looking like a bowling ball. <laughs> Amen, Pastor. Don't get out and exercise no more. Physically. We stop, we stop physically, we stop taking care of our bodies. Amen. You know, you can you couldn't cross nobody over no more. Your mind said, cross them over. I can cross over, I can go all day like this. <laughs> <laughs> but put a ball in my hand and put it in front of somebody. But I ain't gonna even get the ball. I'm gonna go another way. They, they stole it from me. Can't, can't do what I used to do. But we do need to get out. We old. We need to get out and walk. You know, ride a bicycle, do something physically. I, 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 I kept telling my man, I said, I said, I said, you know, I'm gonna just go out to the forest park over there by the museum with the big hill. I'm just gonna run up the hill and run back down, run up the hill twice every day. That's what I'm telling myself. Now I know I'm not gonna do it. <laughs> But my mind says I want to do it. Now, it's up to me to have that faith that he's going to make me whole again, physically. But in order to make me whole physically, I have to take action. That's right. Oh. Just like this woman with the issue. She took action, you all. She took action. She moved her way through the crowd. I don't know how long it took her to get there, but she moved her way. She took action. And she was whole again emotionally, physically, and spiritually. And God can do the same thing for us today. All we have to do is have faith. If you got faith, let me tell you something. If we, we, if we could just touch the hem of Jesus' woman right now today, mm -hmm. I'm telling y'all, lives would be changed. Amen. Seriously, lives would be changed. But how many people want to reach out and touch his garment? Souls going to be saved. Sickness is going to be healed. But who believes that? And see, that these things don't happen because people don't have faith. I done told you all over and over again, you know, you got a faith meter. And sometimes, you know, we take our faith meter and we let our faith meter be on full over here. Then, you know, sometimes things start going happening in life and just start doing like this. Then stuff starts getting, getting real bad and it just goes like this. Then when you get down where, you know, you just don't know where you're going to go, it's on E. It's just like your gas tank. That's why you're walking. <laughs> But see, when your gas get on E, or almost on E, you go to the finest first station you get to, and you pump it all the way up back up to full. How come you can't do your faith like that? How come you can't pump your faith up to be on full, be on full? Huh? You ought to check your faith meter every now and then. Check your faith meter. Because it's going to be up to you all. See, everybody in here has choices, you all. Remember that. You all, we all have choices. The choices you make are yours. But this morning, I'm just telling you, all you got to do is trust in him. Amen? Amen. Emmanuel. Amen.